Hi everyone, Stefan Kesting from grapplearts.com. Today, my friend and training partner Richie is going to help me show you some answers for a, almost a universal problem in Jiu Jitsu, which is what to do when the guy gets the cross collar. The cross collar sucks. I mean, for one thing, it controls your posture. If he's reefing on it, pulling your head down, it's hard for you to do just about every guard pass that you've ever learned. So posture control is one thing, and of course there's always the threat of him slipping that just a little bit deeper and then beginning to choke you by slipping that hand over top, underneath, coming up like this. And against a good collar choke guy, you're going to be tapping out again and again and again if the guy gets this grip. So we're going to look at four solutions to this super common problem. So number one, he hasn't got it too deep yet. He's got it here, he's trying to work it in so it goes around the back of your neck, but he hasn't, he's not there yet. At this point, you can still do counter number one. And that's basically to grab his wrist with both hands and posture back and punch forward. This is no longer legal in judo, so you don't see it in judo anymore, but you can do it all day long in jiu-jitsu. And if you watch the high-level guys doing, uh, you know, fighting for grips on their feet or from the guard, you see this happening again and again and again. So he's not, it's not too deep yet. Grab the wrist with both hands, pop your, your head back and your, your upper back back while you're pressing away like this and then can wrist fight and grip fight to not let him get that again. That's solution number one. Solution number two, it's a bit deeper, but there's still space underneath here. What I'm gonna do is weave my head underneath. Almost all the chokes and all the posture breaks that he can do here, he cannot do here. This nullifies 90% of that advantage and probably he's going to let go and grip, uh, try and get that grip in where it's supposed to go, at which point, again, you nullify the grips. If you want to pass, I prefer standing, but whatever your passes are, that's when you launch them. So number two, I make a little bit of space here maybe, or I weave my hand in and I duck my head under. Number three, now it's getting a bit harder because it's a little bit deeper yet. Number three, he's got a really deep grip now. It's getting into the, uh, the part of the neck where I have to be worried about him latching this, this collar here and choking me. So almost all the chokes rely on this hand coming over, coming under, making some kind of connection with the cross collar. So if I prevent that hand from coming across, I'm in a much, much better position. So I want to block this hand. You can block it at the bicep. You can block it at the armpit. It's your choice. I think I prefer at the bicep. And this makes it difficult. If this hand stays here, he can't really reach. If I'm posturing up a little bit, it's hard, hard, hard for him to make that connection. I can use a trick that Brandon Mullins showed me when we were filming How to Defeat the Biggest Stronger Opponent Series 2. And that's while we're fighting here, he's going to be trying to get that arm out above. I'm going to be opening up Richie's lapel. He's got a lapel grip on me. It's a lapel-based problem. Therefore, I'm going to use a lapel-based solution. We're here. I'm blocking this arm the whole time. I'm going to be opening up this lapel, getting a grip like this, and bringing it over top of Richie's hand, pulling it down. Now. I'm hunkered down, I've got Richie's arm blocked, I've got Richie's uh, lapel grip arm blocked, and we're pretty much stalemated. In order for him to progress, he's got to let go of something. Right? He's not going to be able to move forward, he's not going to be able to attack, so eventually he's going to let go of that neck to go to whatever it is that he wants to go to. At that point, I go to whatever it is that I want to go for. So just to review very quickly, Richie gets a deep grip. I block the armpit, or I block the arm. I work this open, and using a thumbs up grip, I pin this here, and I hunker down. The fourth option is one of my favorites, and it applies for many different kinds of grips and many different kinds of choke threats, but it's dangerous. It's one of those high risk, high reward things. If you do this incorrectly, you will get arm barred. So you don't want to do this for the first time in that big tournament where you haven't trained this before, stick with the stuff that you know. Do this in class. Do this against that guy who's really good at the choke arm bar and see if you can get it to work against him. Anyhow, Richie's here. He's got this one hand in. 
Maybe now he gets the second head in. Just over top, underneath, doesn't matter. This is bad, right? There are a few uh, choke counters, essentially. This is my favorite one. Richie's hands are here. I'm going to bring my hands over top and grab both of his lapels, thumbs up. And I'm not going to grab too high. I'm going to grab down around about the level of his pectorals. I'm going to stand up. What I'm going to do essentially, put your head down to the floor, Richie. I'm going to take this and I'm going to drive it across Richie's neck. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to choke him here. Trouble is, if I just do that here with one hand, he's going to take his hand, he's going to peel off the grip, he's going to, yeah, or he's going to go for my fingers there and just pull this off. Therefore, I'm going to protect this hand and amplify the power of the choke with the other hand. Remember I said grab both lapels? We'll show it without the choke for now, but I'm going to put this across his neck. I'm going to cover up my hand with that lapel. It's much, much harder for him to get at my knuckles now. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to push here and pull here. Thrust choke. You can choke people unconscious with this. I've seen it, especially if the guy on top's got long arms. If the guy's got you know chimpanzee-like build, like I do, it can be a very effective choke. Got little tiny arms, you've got to be a bit more careful. You might be able to get the guy to release his choke. You might not be able to choke him out yourself. Now, of course, what everybody with two months of jiu-jitsu is thinking is, what about the armbar? And that's a totally legitimate question. So, Richie, you've got the choke here. Uh-oh, I've only got a few seconds left to, uh, to get out of this. Incidentally, to apply the choke, Richie wants to pull my head down towards his chest and choke me that way. This thrust choke does the opposite. It takes the distance between my head and his chest and my head and his head and makes it bigger. I'm going to put this across his throat, cover up my fist, stand up, and thrust down. It nullifies the power of his choke and it applies my own choke. Now, what you're thinking is, yes, but Stefan, your arm is straight. He's going to spin to the arm bar every time. And that is true. That's true if I stand like this. But I'm not standing like this. I'm standing like that. It's a subtle difference, but it makes a huge, huge difference in his ability to arm bar. He goes for the choke. I go for my choke. And I'm standing here. Notice my knee in Richie's hip. In order for him to swim or swing to the arm bar, he needs to bring his hips like this. Go back, please. My knee is it's almost like a knee mount or rib mount here is stopping him from bringing his hips in the direction that he needs to arm bar. Now, if he starts letting go and starts going for arm bars or old pauses or something, I let go too. Unless I'm super confident with his choke, it's only to get out of his cross choke that I'm doing the thrust choke. If you don't do that knee and the hip, you will get arm barred. There's an entire chapter of my grappling concepts course, the black belt concepts course, which talks about caging the hips. This is an example of caging the hips. If I control where Richie's hips are and he can't rotate them to bring them out and to do the arm bar, then it's much, much, much harder for him to do the arm bar in any kind of speedy or effective way. And that buys me the time. So very, very quickly, to review what we did, Richie gets a shallow cross grip, both hands on the wrist, snap it off, don't let him get it again. He gets a little bit deeper, I duck through. So grab, even if he keeps that grip, this isn't too dangerous. Nothing really bad is going to happen to you most of the time. Next solution, he starts going deeper. I'm going to block his bicep or block his armpit or even take his gi, ram it in the armpit here. This makes it hard for him to connect that. Then with the other hand, I open up his lapel, bring it over his arm, and hunker down here and stall until he lets go to further his attack, at which point I go ahead and launch my attack. Fourth option, he gets the choke completely in. Whatever the grips are, I don't care. Bring my hands over top. 
across the neck, cover up my hand, stand up, and with a ton of inward knee pressure on the hip, I do a thrust choke. Hopefully tapping them out. Realistically, I'm not going to tap them out unless I've got super long arms and the guy's clueless. But it'll nullify the choke. He'll let go. Now you're standing. He doesn't have a grip. And you're in a great position to pass the guard. So try those. Those are four that have worked really well for me. Hopefully they work well for you too.